It's not all just bombing down rivers, hucking waterfalls, and sending it. There are multiple ways to enjoy time in a kayak, one of which is an actual Olympic sport. But before we dive in, make sure you like this video and subscribe to the channel if you want to find out more about what I'm up to and about kayaking. As whitewater kayaking grew in popularity in the 1930s, a way to safely train on flat water was developed. By adapting the model of slalom skiing, in 1932, canoe slalom was born. And soon after its birth, paddlers switched to racing on actual white water as a form of competition. This new sport quickly grew in popularity, but its development was greatly held back by World War II. And so it would take until 1949 for the first slalom world championship to be held in Geneva, overseen by what is now the umbrella organization of all national canoe organizations worldwide, the International Canoe Federation. But enough about the history. How does it work? The goal of canoe slalom is to make your way down the course as fast as possible, along the way passing through the hanging gates. And there are two types of gates, green gates and red gates. The green gates must be passed downstream or going with the flow, and the red gates must be passed upstream or going against the flow of the water. Gates are also numbered and need to be passed in the correct order. Touching a gate will result in a 2 second penalty and missing a gate results in a whopping 50 seconds penalty, which basically means you're out of the race. All over the world there are many different courses, which can even vary from event to event, but each course has a maximum length of 300 meters and a maximum of 25 gates with at least 6 upstream gates. And fun fact, each course is designed in such a way that the fastest athletes clock in a time between 90 and 110 seconds to finish the course. There are two main disciplines in canoe slalom, kayak and canoe, abbreviated conveniently as K and C. Now, if you're watching this video and you are completely new to kayaking in general, you can distinguish the two by the paddle they use and the way the athletes sit in their boat. A double-bladed paddle used from a seated position is a kayak, and a single-bladed paddle used by an athlete basically kneeling in their boat is a canoe. When you are watching a canoe slalom event, you will, at least at the international level, see four individual events. K1M, K1W, C1M, and C1W. The K and C indicate the discipline, either kayak or canoe, and the M and the W if it's the men's or the women's event. And the 1 indicates the number of paddlers per boat. And yes, the men's C2 category was part of the Olympic program up until 2016. Talking about Olympics, canoe slalom has been part of the Olympics since the 1972 Olympics in Munich as an introductory sport, and it's made its way up to a core sport during the 1992 Barcelona Olympics. And as I mentioned before, the men's C2 event has been dropped in favor of the fairly new women's C1 event, which was introduced during the 2010 World Championships. The event should have made its big debut during the 2020 Tokyo Olympics, but... We all know how that ended. And that was slalom canoeing, or canoe slalom. Now all that's left for you to do is like this video if you like it, subscribe to the channel, and get in a boat and try it out yourself. I did